you don't want me to show that. So we have, um, okay, the first one is from zero. I don't know if it allow. Oh, it could it could uh, really allow us to. Uh, let me see. Let me try that. Let's see if it does the absolute value. It does. So three t minus five. Three t minus five. It does. Okay. So the answer should be six point eight three. Yes. Okay. So. I don't know why I, I clicked twice. Okay. Any questions on the net change theorem? Okay. What of that should we be doing on writing order? Uh, say that again. I think I heard you say something about not having to write everything or I might have just No, I said so. you have to plug it in. And if these are correct, then you get full credit. But I can't I cannot just stop in the middle. I have to continue. So from here you can use the calculator, but these have to be correct. So I don't want you to do the, the arithmetic, but not the fundamental theorem of calculus the way you apply it. This piece you can skip. Okay, so here is what um, what we decide what is uh, test for covering. So we just talked about the theorem of the net the net change theorem. Uh, we looked at definite and indefinite with substitution. We looked at the fundamental theorem of calculus. We applied it so, so many times. So we looked at antiderivatives. We know how to determine antiderivatives. We used the properties of the definite integral already, many of them. Um, approximating an integral, the limit of the Riemann sum, and the part one that we just talked about with a function given as, a, as an integral. And you can choose anything you want from here. You can tell me what you would like me to go back to. Could we go over the limit of the Riemann sum? Could. Perfect. So let's go to the limit of the Riemann sum and let's choose a function. So give me any function. Linear, quadratic, or cubic. And uh, let's... Um, and an interval. I also need an interval. And uh, determine the area under the graph. Anyone would like to make up a, a question, a function, and an interval? Anyone? You want me to choose? Uh, yes, you can choose. Okay, 3x squared plus 4x. It's a uh, quadratic function. I'm going to be nice and say 0 to 4. Nice being starting at 0. That's the nice thing. The, the other one doesn't matter. We need three preps. First of all is delta x, 4 minus 0 over n. Prep number two is xi, which is always 0 plus i delta x, in this case 0, plus i delta x, which is 4i over n. And prop three is when I plug this in and get f of xi as 3 times 16i squared over n squared plus 4 times 4, 16i over n. And this becomes... Um, what is this? 64 i squared over n squared plus 16 i over n. Are the preps clear? The 48. Yes, 48. Very good. 
I, that's exactly what I was looking. Thank you very much. I'm actually a little confused about something. Go ahead. Where are 16s coming from? So when I replace in f of x, when I replace x by 4i over n, I have to square 4i over n, and then I have to multiply 4 by 4i over n. That's how we evaluate a function. If I, have, if I want to determine f of 5, I have 3 times 5 squared plus 4 times 5, but I need to evaluate for 4i over n. Anything else? Is that okay? Yes? No? Seems fine. Is that okay now? Okay, so then the area is the limit as n approaches infinity from the sum from i equals 1 to n from delta x, which is 4 over n, times all this. 48i squared over n squared plus 16i over n. I'm trying to cut back a little bit on writing, a little bit if possible. First, I'm going to put 4 over n in front, so limit as n approaches infinity, 4 over n. And then when I apply the, the sum to this, 48 over n squared comes out, and the sum of i squared plus. When I apply the sum to this uh, term, I have 16 over n times the sum of i. Of course, this is from i equals 1 through n. So then limit as n approaches infinity 4 over n. Remember that this has to be replaced as well as this. So I have 48 over n squared, and this is the ugly one. n, 2n squared plus 3n plus 1, I already multiplied it, plus 16 over n, n, n plus 1 divided by 2. So these are those four identities that you have to have ready for the test and the final. This one is n, n plus 1, 2 n plus 1, but I already multiplied it. And this is n over 6, and this is n times n plus 1 over 2. Okay, next, I'll try to simplify as much as I can. And it turns out that I can simplify an n, and I can simplify by 6. And I can simplify by 2. Do not simplify, although it's tempting, do not simplify the n because the least common denominator still have to be, it will still have to be n. So there is no need to do this here. Okay, so then limit as n approaches infinity, the least common denominator is n, and I'll multiply it by the n in front. So the rest is nice, 8 times 2 n squared, 16 n squared, 8 times 3, 24. Check my numbers, please. Okay, 8 n squared plus 8 n. Let's do this again. 8 distributed here will get this, but 8 distributed to n squared plus n is going to be this. I already know the answer. It's 4 times 16, which is not 64, but 48. So, but let's say we don't see that. Oh, uh, there is one here. So it's 24 times 4. Okay, so the, let's not rush. I'm rushing. So 24n squared, 24 plus 8 is 32n plus 8. And we know that when we apply the limit, we get infinity over infinity. We know that the answer is going to be this, because this is 1, but that's okay. Let's say we don't see that. 
limit as n approaches infinity. I differentiate the top and I get 48n plus 32. I differentiate the denominator and I get 2n. Again, I have infinity over infinity. I differentiate the top and I get 48. I differentiate the denominator and I get 2. I'll simplify and I get 96. Of course, I have a very, very simple tool of checking. Okay, here it is. So the area equals the integral from 0 to 4 from 3x squared plus 4x dx. And I'm going to check right now. Three x to the third over three plus four x squared over two from zero to four. Luckily, they are polynomials. I can only I only need to plug in four. So um, sixteen uh, times four, I think it's sixty four, and uh, four times four is sixteen plus times two is thirty two, and I get ninety six. Any questions? Any questions on this? OK. Anything else you would like to go back to? Go ahead. Approximations. Yes. Let's do another. Uh, yes. Left, middle, and right. Yep, whatever you want. Yes. So, for example, we can have an integral like this. Um, which page am I on? I think on tw there. So, let's say we have uh, the integral from uh, 2 to 4 from. I'm thinking of tangent to the third of x dx. You cannot find this. I'm just curious, very curious. I don't use this feature unless I show it in, in class. But uh, let me just, uh, I'm super interested to see what the calculator comes up with because no human being can determine the um, antiderivative of this. Tangent uh, x uh, I want parentheses then I want tangent x and then outside, no, not that far, not there, no. I did it on my calculator and it was to able to find it. It was? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it approximates it, but it doesn't, it's not, I don't think it's capable of finding the antiderivative. Okay, so if it, if it, okay, I don't have to do it then. Awesome. So let's say uh, we're asked to use four subintervals, and um, um, whatever. What do you want to do? You want to do left, right, or midpoint. Choose one. We don't want to choose? Left, right, or midpoint? Can we do left? Uh, say that again? Can we do left? Left. Very good. Okay. So first I have to illustrate the interval, which is between 2 and 4. I have to find delta x, which is um, 4 minus 2 over 4. 4 minus 2 over 4 is 2 over 4, which is 1 half. Okay. So this is one half, this is one half, this is one half, this is one half. 
and this is 3, and this is 2.5, and this is 3.5. So then the left point would be 1, 2, 3, 4. Delta x in front, 1 half. Of course, it's an approximation. Uh, 1 half. Then f of 2 plus f of 2.5 plus f of 3 plus f of 3.5. I will put them in the calculator in lists, enter, in list L1, clear, list L2, clear. Okay, in list L1, I want 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5. And then in list L2, careful, the top will do 0.5 and then in parentheses tangent x close, close again. I didn't mean that. I meant list L1 here. Close again and then the power is 3. So 0.5 times tangent of list L1, what will it, this do? 0.5 times tangent of 2 and write the answer here, cubed. 0.5 times tangent of 2.5, cubed, and put the answer here. Make sure that the mode is in radian mode. I don't think I changed it. Okay, when I press enter, I get all these numbers. Okay, tangent cubed is not always positive. It could be negative. Now, if the function is not continuous between 2 and 4, then I can determine this. I'm sorry, how did you get to that on your calculator? I forgot how to. Which part? Um, just to that table. Uh, with uh, stat and enter, edit. Okay. Okay, thank you. Did you get it? Yeah. Okay. So now all I have to do is just add these up. And I don't want to do it by hand. You can if you want, but I don't want to do it by hand. So I go to stats. Let me exit from there. I go to stats and then one variable stats on list L2. I want to calculate, add up list L2. And I don't need anything there. And only the summation notation. Negative 5.39997, blah, 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 blah. So that's the area. 5.39972. Now, this doesn't mean anything if the function is not continuous. So I'm just going to look. I just made it up and I didn't even think. So tangent to the third. So the calculator gives a number, <laughs> but who cares what the number, if the number is correct or not, right? So we care. I don't, I don't need a number. I just want to see the graph. If it's not continuous, I have to change the, the graph, uh, the function. I was just illustrating how to do this, but the function has to be continuous. So I'm going to graph, but Again, the mode is in radian mode, yes. I want the win viewing window to be between 0 and 6, because the integral that I chose is between 2 and 4. And I'm going to go from negative 10 to 10. And for radians, the function is not continuous. I don't even need to think. I didn't think at first, but I don't. The function has it's not defined at pi over two, and pi over two, pi over two, is between. Yeah, pi over two is before two. That's true. Pi over two is before two, and then when is the next one? Three pi. It could be. Okay.
So where is I chose uh, zero to six, and where so zero one two okay. So I I got lucky. Two, three, four. I got lucky. That's why the area is negative. Okay, the function is continuous between two and four. Okay. And there is more area that is negative than area that is positive. That's why the answer is negative. Okay, so this is... Is Joe putting the number into the list again? Because I can't yeah, see go to, to Go to stat and edit, and you just put them in. I mean, like, putting in the tangent thing. I tried putting that in, but I get an error, so I must be doing it wrong. Oh, you mean the list L2, the top? 